and we're not at camp yet, but when we get to camp, there's like a vacuum that's created because, you know, when they got rid of, uh, you know, Lehigh and training camp and fans not being able to go down there anymore, back in the day, you didn't have to have, you know, 50 reporters live tweeting everything down there because you could watch it with your own two eyes, you know, and you could come to your own conclusions, sure. right? So when you remove that, uh, but you don't remove the, like the thirst and the interest for Eagles news and Eagles information in the summer, what happens is that you get it re relayed to you by reporters, which is fine. I mean, they got to do their jobs. And there's a lot of interesting video that comes out. It comes out of uh, camp, you know, and people are sharing a lot of stuff online. But then you get like Jalen Hurts went three for 10 and this meeting was fucking drill or something like that. And that's the stuff that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And so you're you're taking a vacuum. There's a vacuum created because the fan is no longer able to watch that stuff. You replace the vacuum with vapid, vapid stuff, you know. So it's like that's the only problem that I have. It's like the good news for us though is tweets are coming. <laughs> Training camp is coming. My question though is I know everybody's favorite speaking of people that make shit up, Elliot Short Parks. Um <laughs> he just got married, right? So is he gonna be back for camp? Because what are people gonna do? They're gonna be scratching, they want the tweets, man. They need that practice tweets. But here's Hashtag a funny thing. Wedding. Here's, a, here's a funny thing. Here's actually like a real take to forward that discussion. Like obviously, like there's a demand for that stuff, right? Yes, you know, like fans want that stuff because like he and other people will like will send this stuff out and get like 300 friggin likes because, you know, Quez Watkins made a catch. Over. The Jalen Rager one handed catch thought he was going to be yeah. awesome. Yeah. But so are we to say then like, you know, because we all laugh out and say it doesn't matter or whatever, but like this is what fans want. So like, do we say then like the customer needs to like chill out because this stuff like isn't worth it? You know, like where where in wherein does the problem lie? You know, is it the person providing the information or the people who are seeking the meaningless information in the first place? You know, it's kind of a well, rhetorical question. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what the answer is to that. The numbers, I, the numbers don't lie. I mean, this country just eats, drinks and sleeps football. I mean, the, we got yeah, what, yeah. how many leagues now? USFL, XFL, yeah. uh, you know, we got college football. It, it just go down the list. I mean, that's what it's all about. And that's what yeah, it comes down to for me. So when we get to training camp, look, I, I won't lie. I look at it. I look at certain people, and I'm not one of these guys that wants to get uh, every play, you know, oh, my God, what happened on the next play? Because at the end of the day, it's practice. I expect mistakes and all that. But yeah. definitely intrigued to see, you know, the tweets at the end of practice. Tim McManus does a great job afterwards. Hey, these are the things that I learned. These are the things that I think are important. I always read that last year, if I'm not mistaken, on ESPN.com. But. You know, the people that are out there reading Matt Lombardo and Elliot Shore Parks and whoever else going, oh, my God, did you see that? He, he threw it like, you know, that's a little a little. Yeah, like I said, yeah leave that to us. <laughs> yeah, leave that to us to hype yeah. up that shit. Yeah. This is actually a good idea. I want to bring this back up again. Uh, Matt says they should stream training camp practice, charge four ninety nine and donate it to the autism charity. I mean. It realistically, like, you know, and for example, like just for some clarity here, like media is only allowed to watch like a certain portion of practice and they're only allowed to film a certain portion. Right. But yeah, if you're going to say like fans can't go down there for a training camp or whatever, then give give them that raw footage of the of the stuff that's open to the media as well. You know, and then maybe you just maybe you curb this problem of people blowing things out of proportion that really aren't that important. You know, I don't know if that's the solution or not. But again, I'm not I'm not going to like I don't want to shit on the fan because if the fan wants this stuff. Yep. Then so be it, man. And like yep. if the customer in, in, in a way, the customer is always right, but it's just about giving the customer stuff that matters instead of stuff that doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So. Kev, when, when they used to do it down at Lehigh, were you only allowed there for an allotted time? Like maybe a first practice or a second practice? Were you allowed to watch everything? And just because there was no phones and anything, they didn't really care. Um, as far as I remember, man, you could stay as long as you wanted, yeah. right, Sean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I remember going up there as a kid and like we would just sit there and man, the stands would be full and there'd be like hundreds of people just watching the whole thing, you know? All and, day long. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know how they got, I don't remember back then at the time, like, hey, we're like doing an install here of like some secret plays or something like that. <laughs> Everybody look the other way. I don't know like what that was. I don't know how they parsed all of that, but I mean, I remember it was just like open and we would just go there and we'd watch a whole damn thing. And then, you know, Trey Thomas would walk over and throw his like sweaty dock strap and then you got a fan for life. Yeah. You know, so, so, but you, you, don't, you don't get those like, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't get those like impression. Big moments. ass jock, bro. That is a big ass jock. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just think too, and I don't, I don't need to bitch. I've done enough bitching on the site about training camp, not being there anymore, but I feel like you lose like a little bit of your connection to the team. Because for a lot of people, you only got how, how many eight home games or nine now, depending on the season. Like a lot of people like never get to see the Eagles in person at all, you know, and like camp to me was like a, yeah, you know, it was like a, uh, not a coming of age, like pilgrimage. What's the word I'm looking for? It's like a trial. It was like a rites, like a rite of passage. Yeah. You know, it's like, Hey, I'm going to go up and see training camp, you know, and you felt like a connection to the team and now you don't 
do that stuff anymore. Fans can't do it. Now you have this vacuum and then you got people tweeting a bunch of bullshit that really doesn't matter. And it's just like, you know, I feel like there's just a way to make that all better. Plus you know? it was like minor leagues up there for the Lehigh Valley. Like those people, you know, were the ones that consumed it more than anybody. Right. And oh, it yeah. kind of took that away from them. So I feel for them on that one. It is a little bit of a haul and a commute to get down to an Eagles Sunday and then three hours of traffic after every game, you know, you're not getting home to the next day. So uh, you know, you, you yeah. can flip it. The idea of going to practice to little Timmy and he would actually like that than not going to a game at all. So yeah. Yeah. I, d- I definitely would like to see them get back in some capacity to the Lehigh Valley, but totally understand with everything technology, it's all there in your backyard. Use the facilities at the link.